When you look at these pieces, what do you see? Junk? Trash? Oscar the Grouch's lunch? <laughs> when I look at these pieces, I see something more. I see possibilities. I am a creative reuse artist. I am a maker, a crazy creative. I take these pieces that people think are junk and I turn them into art. I do this with reuse and I am all about reuse. I rethink expectations and understand strengths to evolve. Take this plastic bottle. As you just heard, it is better to use and drink from a reusable cup instead, but if you find yourself with this plastic bottle, you may think the you may expect it to have fulfilled its purpose. So normally you would just toss it, but not if you're all about reuse. If you're all about reuse, you rethink that expectation and assess the strengths to see what you can make from it, transform it into something like the leaves of this pineapple. I am all about reuse, and I love creative reuse and rethinking all the time. I get to redesign and reimagine my life daily and the pieces that come in and out of my life daily. I let my creative freak flag fly high all the time. And in my world, I'm constantly asking, what are the strengths of this? How can I reuse it? What can I do with it next instead of tossing it? In my world, everything uh, that I look at, whenever it comes in and it's pieces, I can take it and transform it into something. Corks, they become Sisyphus's rock. And plastic pieces, they can feed hungry mouths. A scrapped book page can be a message to a long-lost friend. And mangled bracelets, they become the face of a cool little redhead. I am all about reuse in other ways, very practical ways. I try to use uh, anything that I can reuse, I try to use that way I can reduce waste. A tea strainer, reusable coffee filter, reusable cup I mentioned earlier, and also reusable bags when I'm shopping. And I'm still working on that daily, but creative reuse has taught me a lot about practically reusing, and I improve every day with it. But I am all about reuse for another reason. I'm creatively and practically about reuse, but I'm also personally about reuse. I have a very personal reason why I am all about reuse. About a year ago, I left the career that I thought I was going to retire in. I left the education system. I was one of those people that Ken Robinson talks about, and you'll hear from him in a little bit when we watch his famous TED Talk. He talks about people who go through their days and they just don't enjoy what they're doing. That was me. I was begging for five o'clock and hoping for holidays, wishing for weekends, and just wishing my time away in general. And I know that that was not the way that I needed to be living. It was not something that felt good at all. And so I thought about why, like why was I feeling that way? And I remember when I entered the education field, I, re I entered it for two reasons. Because I was passionate about helping people, helping kids succeed in life, find their success. And I wanted to be creative. And I felt like in a role as a teacher that I could be creative. But what I found through my years is that the people in education often define success in some other important words very differently. Teachers define success a certain way. Principals define it another way. Legislators define it in a very different way. And all of those ways were very different than the way that students defined it.
Because while most students that I taught were very creative and had lots of interests in things such as dance, art, and music, those things were always second to other things. And keep in mind, I was an English teacher. So um, I had... I had to face this all the time where I saw my inability to, my limitations with bringing creativity into the classroom and all the limitations that I had with helping my students be successful in their paths and to find success for themselves. And so it was very, very difficult for me. And I entered with all of these beliefs and expectations but my behavior, my teaching behavior, with all the limitations that I had, ended up showing, it ended up creating this, what people call cognitive dissonance. It's a very fancy word. I had to include one in here, just so y'all know that I, 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 I am smart. <laughs> but, it, but it's a fancy word for just when your beliefs and expectations, they don't match up with your behavior. And it creates this conflict and tension inside of you. And I lived with that for many years from, from what I expected to enter into and then what happened in my career. And I went through the years not really understanding what was wrong with me and why I couldn't just be the best teacher ever. And I made a lot of mistakes along the way, some mistakes in, with students that I wish that I could take back. But I look back and think the, a lot of it dealt with this tension that I felt in me all the time, knowing that what I define success, at, how I define success, and what I wanted for my students was not what I was able to do. So I kept going through the years trying to figure out what I needed to do until I couldn't keep going. I felt like I was trapped trying to conform in something that was not me. And so I left. And a lot of people thought that I was crazy for a lot different reason than they may think I'm crazy now, I hope. And a lot of, I had some really good friends. They tried to get me to stay because, because I did have a passion, and they had a passion, and they wanted me to be there. So it was very difficult when people are trying to get you to stay in something that you know you no longer belong in. And I tried to tell myself the same thing. I tried to tell myself that I should try to see, try to see if I could stay in this career and do what I could do, but I just could not. There was something inside of me saying, that I needed to move on. And so when I finally did, I got very, very depressed because to begin with, I thought this is where I was going to be. And so uh, I, I talked to my educator friends and they Again, they tried to get me to stay. And when you, when you talk to educators, there's something about talking to them that you need to keep in mind. If you're talking to a bunch of educators and you don't know what to talk about, then you can talk about walls. There's lots of walls in education. And there's word walls, data walls, bear walls, Decorating the two busy walls, learning beyond the four walls, and breaking down the walls. Principals like to talk about this. But for me, I had too many walls, too many walls around me, and I needed to break free from that. So I left, but I left broken and damaged and purposeless. And I wondered what I was going to do because I had always thought of myself as a public school educator and in the education system and thought I was going to retire there. So like with any bad relationship, which this was a bad relationship, with a breakup with any bad relationship, I wanted to get rid of everything 
in that relationship. So I started taking everything that I had accumulated over the years, and believe me, uh, how many educators in here? You accumulate a lot of things over the years, right? So I, st- I didn't want the- these reminders around me, so I started trying to give away these things. And what I didn't give away, I wanted to throw away. I found lots of notes to myself, checklists in those, uh, those crazy long faculty meetings that I had made, to reminders of, for me to do the next day. I found an article about how to tell a parent that their child was actually the spawn of Satan. <laughs> I wrote that article. You would have too if you taught a ton of teenagers every single day. But I also found another thing. I found these three bottles of paint that uh, I had bought a long time ago, and each classroom and place that I had moved to, even when I became a teacher of teachers, I took them with me, but they were barely used. And I found these three bottles, and I thought, let me try something. So I took those pieces in front of me and these bottles of paint, and I created something with them. And I entered a local art contest in it, with it. I, I didn't win the contest. <laughs> it wasn't the greatest piece ever. But I met a ton of people there. And all of those people led me to other people and more opportunities. And I kept asking questions and searching more on this path to a creative life, something that I had wanted a long time ago. And I kept putting these pieces together, and I started finding more scraps everywhere I could find. I wanted to, I went to local places and said, what do you have? I went to a flower shop. They gave me all of their old silk flowers. I went to a cabinet place. They gave me their samples that weren't in anymore, that weren't being used. And I asked for these things, and I went to galleries and found places that would let me do workshops with them. I went to the Chamber of Commerce and taught ladies how to make junk journals there that they turned into their vision journals to improve in their professional lives. So I met a lot of people, and I started working with all of these scraps that I had found everywhere. And I realized something. I realized that I wasn't starting all over, that I could take the pieces of my career bagged up by the door and ready to be disposed of and turn them into something new and different and interesting. In life, we, we put these expectations on things where one thing can't be, we can't see the possibilities in it. A chair cannot be a shelf. It's only a chair. And a glass lampshade, it can't hold a plant, be a planter. A cabinet door can't be a frame for a really cool mountain. We tend to put these expectations on things and forget to see the possibilities in things. And that's what I did. I didn't see that I could have this crazy creative life, that I could take what already existed in me and turn it into something better than what I ever thought I could. And now I want to help others do the same thing to make up for some of the times that I could not. So that's my hope, is to help others, to show them that you can take the pieces of you that feel broken from your past and turn them into something new and interesting. So maybe you're me a year ago and you feel broken and incomplete and purposeless. I have a challenge for you, a crazy creative challenge. Go home, find something that is broken, incomplete, and purposeless. Fix it, complete it, and give it purpose. I think you'll find that you're going to end up salvaging more than just that object. Thank you.